<clears throat> Welcome back. So I'm going to uh, install the GitHub desktop. Um, this is just a Git client. There's a lot of Git clients out there. There's also a lot of SVN client and Mercurial clients out there. But we have to choose one. We have to select some kind of client that we want to work with. Maybe your uh, company already has a client. Maybe uh, your teachers tell you what client to use. I'm using this guy. Now the GitHub desktop, as it, the name says, it's uh, built against GitHub. So we're going to use GitHub as our cloud service later on. Um, but you could have used Tortoise Git if you are working with Git or maybe Source Tree. That's also a great tool for Git. You could also use, if you're using SVN, there's Tortoise SVN, which is also a great tool if you want to use SVN instead as your version control. Again, this video will be about Git. That's why I'm choosing this one. So I've just gone into desktop.github.com and here there's a download GitHub desktop. And I'll just press this one. And something just went horribly wrong. So I'll just try again. <laughs> And here I get a github setup.exe file and I'm just pressing that one and it'll take a bit of time to install this. I'll just let that install and get back to you guys. So when the installation is done, this guy should pop up, the github desktop application. Before we start using it, even though it blinks here and says, oh, please go in here, don't do that. Let's start off by doing some options. So I press the cockwheel here and I say options. Here I want to do two things. One is, this guy might not be set on your machine. Um, so if it's not set, set it up now. It says, please enter your name, Git requires an email address. Now, we, if you don't do this, you'll get errors as we move through this course. So you have to set this up. So choose some kind of name. I'll just call this Lars Bilde and give it my mail address. It's going to use this as, if, whenever I'm going to save or change a folder, it knows who made the change. So that's the value of it. It's going to tell it that Lars made this change to the folder or Chuck Norris made this change to the folder. Yeah, I'm a friend with Chuck. Or whatever happens is going to make change to this folder, right? So we need the name to know who made the changes. Another thing you could consider is saying, in my case, I don't want the clone path to be actually under the user. I want it to be actually under a work folder under my C drive. So I'll just change that. I've made a work folder. That's just the way I, I like my folder structure to be, to always have a work folder. So that will be my clone path. Next lessons, we'll talk about what clone is all about. And then you can choose some different other information here if you want to. When you're done, if you want the light or dark theme, etc. When you're done, you'll just say save, and we're ready to make our first repository. So we'll do that in the next video. But first, I want to show you another thing you got. You got the GitHub client, but you also actually got another GitHub guy called the git shell. Every time I'm going to do something inside the desktop client, I'll also go and show you guys how you can do it inside the shell, if you're more of a terminal guy than a UI guy. So that's up to you, but I wanna show you both. So don't worry, there'll be a video for both scenarios. So let's end it here and uh, see you in the next lesson where we'll start doing our first clone of an actual repository in the cloud. See you next time.